November was a rough month, y'all. It was just, it was just strange and it was filled with ups and downs and just like chaos and I didn't end up reading nearly as much as I normally do. Um, what I did read though, the books that I finished were fantastic. I loved them. I loved all the books that I finished this month, but <laughs> that's only three books. I only finished three books this month. Like, who am I? I started five and finished three. But we're gonna talk about those three. We are going to talk about those three books because they are all five star books. Like, I had a five star month even if I only read three books. So you know what? I'm happy. I am happy with what I read because for one, there's people out there that read like a book a year or a book a month. And the fact that a lot of us as like booktubers, we feel this pressure to read so much, right? Like we feel like we have to continuously be pushing ourselves and reading and reading and reading and reading and Oh, I need, I only read 10 books this month. I only read 12 books or, oh my God, they're going to hate me because I only read four books this month. Like, who, who, who's going to actually be upset that you read three books in a month instead of 10? My followers? I mean, most of y'all that I've talked to are really chill and like, I don't think would have a problem with me only reading three books in a month. And like I said, most people don't read as much as we read in a month, in an entire year, y'all. Like, I know people that read 12 books a year, and that's fine. Like, let people live and read at their own speeds. Like I've said before, I'm a mom. I have two small children. I have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, and they require a lot of time. So sometimes... I am not reading at all in an entire day because I'm prioritizing spending time with my children or with my husband or, you know, I have a day job. I also have a side job and my husband owns his own business. So like there's a lot of things going on and I, you know, I like to see my family and I like to see friends and I'm just not always sitting and reading. And while I feel like I read fast, I don't read nearly as fast as some of y'all out there and more power to you, but I try, but I can't read as fast as a lot of people. I also can't consume audiobooks. No matter how many times I have tried, I cannot comprehend them. They go in one ear and out the other. I don't remember anything that I listen to. I can't, I can't get into them. I'm very visual. I need to look, I need to see. Just like when I was in school, like if I was just listening to a lecture, it's like floating the fuck on by. But like if I'm watching the professor write something or if I'm reading it, then I remember. So I'm very visual. I have to have that to retain the information. So audiobooks, while I know they would exponentially increase the amount of time I could spend reading, they just don't work for me. So, I hope you enjoyed that little rant about how much and little that we read, because now we're going to kind of jump into what you're actually here for, and that's the wrap-up part of this video. I'm going to start with the two books that I started and have not finished. These are not DNFs. These are just books that I didn't finish yet, and I will be finishing maybe in December, maybe not, but I started them. <laughs> and the first one is Dune. I only read one chapter of this. So I have not much to say at all, except for I'm excited to read more. The first chapter just kind of dumps you into the world. You're like, whoa, whoa. Like it just jumps you right in to whatever's going on. And I actually really appreciate that. I enjoy that. So I'm excited to read more of this and to see what my like actual thoughts end up being about this book. Another one that I only read a little bit of is this book right here and that is Crown of Embers which is the second book in the Girl of Fire and Thorn. I really really enjoyed the first book in this series 
and I'm enjoying this one. Like I said, I'm only like three chapters is all I got into this. Three chapters. But it picks up not long after the first book. And this is like a pretty typical, I guess, YA series. Um, but it does a lot of really cool trope subversion in the first book. We have our main girl who is a princess of a kingdom and she is born with what they call a godstone in her belly button, but she don't know why. All she knows is like she's destined for greatness, but there's nothing great about her, you know, in her opinion. She's very mediocre. She's heavy set. She really likes to eat, which girl me too. And she ends up getting married off to the king of another land. And it's like really secretive. And there's this whole revolution and rebellion. And it's really cool the way it does like kind of a darker side of YA and it incorporates religion that seems very, the religion aspect in this book series does seem very like Judeo-Christian, which is fine. I, you know, it's what I'm used to as somebody here in the United States, like it's a very common religion. So I'm very used to it. So I see a lot of those tropes, those elements here in this book, but it's really, really cool. I'm excited to see where it goes and to finish reading the sequel. On to the three books that I actually finished and all of them were five star books. The first one is Fireborn and y'all, I can't believe that I was putting this off for so long. I had picked this up a while ago and finally just got around to reading it and it was so good. Definitely a lot better than I was expecting it to be. Um, we are dealing with two main perspectives. One is our male perspective and they're both teenagers. He is the heir to the dragon throne basically and his entire family was killed off in a very violent revolution but he was spared and he ended up being raised in an orphanage and he ends up kind of going through the ranks and going into this like special school for dragon riders where he gets to have you know a dragon pick him and he gets to compete there's a big competition aspect of this book where they are competing to be like the head writer basically and we also follow one of our female characters and she was raised in the orphanage alongside of our main boy but her family was actually killed by the dragon riders back before this like bloody revolution so she is kind of like the only person in the entire world that kind of realizes without even realizing it that there's something different about our main boy Leon. There is something different about Lee that he she's like something is off like it's like she subconsciously knows who he is but never admits it and I really like that. There's definitely some YA tropey romancy aspects but it's not super heavy and I actually don't hate the way it was done. It's not like your typical love triangle. It's very much just kind of teenagers exploring and being like well I like you so let's make out and I kind of like you too so let's make out too. So there's that and that doesn't bother me at all because it look it's <laughs> it's a lot better than the oh I love you but I also love him but I also love him like it, it's not that so appreciate that but this is just a really cool YA fantasy and I'm really excited for the second book to come out which I believe that comes out this coming year in 2021 you know the only issue that I have is that uh they changed the covers so my covers not gonna match I also read The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern this month again another five star read I don't even know how to describe this book it is a fever dream. It is just a beautiful, poetic, very lyrical, very purple prose, dreamlike, whimsical book. There is a book within a book. There is a secret library. There's kind of this like mystery aspect to it. And it's so good. But y'all, it is so confusing. It 
I didn't know what was going on until like literally the end of this book. So take this with a grain of salt. This book is not going to be for everybody because it is so lyrical and so confusing and you really just did you don't have a whole shit ton of plot what you have is very character driven very magical very you just you just go with it just just roll with it and see where this acid trip is gonna take you it is very alice in wonderland inspired i feel like and there's a lot of references to alice in wonderland being down the rabbit hole and it's very, very reminiscent of how weird like Wonderland is. That is the best way I can describe this. But y'all, this may be one of my favorite books of the year. It is so, so good. And I feel like this is one of those books that will get better on reread. And that is because you pick up on some of the little hints that are there throughout the entire book as to where the plot is going, but you don't know that the first time around. So I really think this will be really fun on a reread. All right, and the last book that I read in the month of November and gave five stars to is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. Now, I had already read a little bit over half of this before I even started it in November. So I finished it in November. I read about half of it, but it's like, a long book like let, let's be real reading half of a Brandon Sanderson Stormlight book is like reading a whole book so there's that so really I read a lot of pages I just didn't read a lot of books but I'm not holding that up because it's really fucking heavy um so I read, read words of radiance gave it five stars I absolutely loved it um as much as I loved way of kings I definitely enjoyed words of radiance even more because we got more exploration of our characters and what they can do and some of the powers in this world and like we the world opened up a whole lot more I feel like in this book and I think it will continue to do so as the series progresses because this is meant to be like a 10 book series with a five book with two five book arcs <laughs> so yeah it's there's a lot going on um I still don't like Adolin many of you may know I am an Adolin hater, not not a fan of his, but he slightly improved in this book, so he's not as horrible. And then the ending, the ending was so good, like the very end, the very, very, very end, made me actually excited to see where Adolin's character goes because some things happen and I'm like, ooh. I like this. I like where I can see this going. And it's just such a cool story. And if you haven't read the Stormlight Archives, I really recommend getting into them if you like high epic fantasy. But don't try to fly through them. Don't even try to read them in a month. Enjoy them. Take your time with them. That's what I'm doing. I'm just like slowly going through the Stormlight Archives. And I'm really enjoying my experience. I thought I would try to read like one book a month, but like I can't, there's too much. There's just a lot of information in one of these books. And while I absolutely love the story, I love it consuming it slowly. All right, well, those were the books that I read in the month of November. It was definitely a very slim month when it comes to the books that I read, but a very wonderful month when it came to the quality of the books that I read because I loved all three of the books that I finished. So that has to count for something, right? All right, well, I'm Jessie and I will see you guys next time. Bye.